Hello and welcome to the Draeger how-to video series. My name is Craig Nielsen. I've been in the fire service for 30 years and I've been training with these Swede survival systems for over 10 years. During this time I've been able to witness a variety of methods used training with these flashover simulators. Some methods work well while other methods create unnecessary risks and can shorten the life of your system. In this video I want to share some tips on how to load your burn box and build a crib fire. These tips will allow you to get the most value out of every training session and also maximize the life of your Draeger Sweet Survival Flashover Simulator. Let's talk about crib building. It's very important to build a crib that's going to create enough energy so that you get that flashover effect. Again, flashover is a heat generated fire phenomena. If you don't have enough heat, that phenomena will not occur. So crib building is very important. We like to use this barrel and why we like to use a barrel is it's like a measuring cup. We like to use a certain blend of both hardwood and softwood. We need that softwood to get that fire burning initially, but we need that hardwood to get the longevity of the burn and to get that flashover phenomena to occur several times. We're gonna start building the crib. You can see that we have our two pallet segments here. We're gonna interlace them together. These are our hardwood pallets. Remember, we're gonna use that mix of hardwood and softwood. We're gonna start off with interlacing them inside of our barrel, and then we're gonna go ahead and mix some softwood in here also. Fill this barrel with as much segmented pallet material as you can. Now we're gonna start interlocking smaller pieces of wood, and you just kind of fit them in anywhere they will go. The next procedure to this crib is we're gonna use single sheets of newsprint. Wad them up, and we're gonna start placing them in every single void that we possibly can. We're gonna take some wire, whether it's bailing wire or whatever wire that you have handy, but we're gonna wrap this material and that's to contain it all within this barrel. Remember, if you don't have a crib, your burn's pretty much done. So if your material falls forward out of the barrel, your burn's over. This is what it should look like. It should look like it's exploding with paper. We want enough paper in here to generate enough heat to get that wood burning. When we place this crib in the container itself on a phase one system, we want to alternate from side to side. So if we're going to do consecutive burns, you just want to make sure that we alternate it from one side to the other so that we don't degrade the connection between the doors. Another important fact is when we place this crib, we want to make sure the opening is facing the students so that we can access this with a hose line if we need to. So right now we're going to show you how to load your phase one flashover system. The key to loading your box is consistency. As consistent as you try to make it, every burn will still be a little bit different. After burning in this system hundreds of times, the recipe we've come up with that will give you both longevity and create a nice safe environment is six full sheets and six half sheets. We have our crib in place. We like to have that opening toward our students and the instructor. So we have a good access to the crib. We want it tucked up into the corner. We want the energy to spread up the walls, into the ceiling, and across the ceiling. We have a full sheet on this side, a full sheet on the other side, a half sheet here, and a half sheet on the other side. And these half sheets act as like sacrificial material. They help protect the container and also provide more off-gassing. On the back wall, we have four half sheets. We like to overlap so that we have the gap away from the energy of the crib because we don't want the energy to go back behind our boards, creating a space in there that we can't access with a hose line. And that goes for the ceiling as well. We have four full sheets, two on one side and two on the other. We like to stack them two by two rather than interlace because it creates more of a gap in between each board. We want to prevent those gaps from occurring. We use some blocking material to force that material up against the ceiling level. We don't want flames getting up onto the upper level and we wouldn't be able to access that with a hose line. We want to make sure we have our factory ends into the corners, make a nice tight seal. We want our cut ends leading outward, like here in the middle and also on the sides. So we want a nice tight factory edge. It'll prevent the fire or any energy getting behind those boards and we wouldn't be able to access that with a hose light. Thanks for watching this Draeger Sweet Survival how-to video series. I hope these tips will help you get the most value out of your live fire training system. For more information about the Draeger Sweet Survival systems, go to draeger.com.
train safe and have a great day.